thank you uh, respected chairperson for this nice introduction at the outset uh, uh, i would like to welcome all of you to vexi id con because it's not the conference the faculties the science it's the delegates which make the conference work and that's what we are seeing this is the most successful as far as the attendance is concerned thank you so much for being here now uh, coming to my topic that updates on uh, newer hpv so i have just covered my topic about like this three quick headings basics of hpv classification what is the relation with cervical cancer the brand which we are going to track that is update of newer hpv that is cervavax clinical data and summary so first the question comes what is hpv see it's a human papilloma virus it is a non enveloped dna virus that infects the skin and mucosal cells and almost 14 out of 150 known hip uh, genotypes can cause can cause the cancer cancer so hpv is not only causing cervical cancer it causes so many cancers it can be cervix vagina and vulval cancer in women penile cancer in men anal in both men and women back to uh, back of the throat including the base of tongue and tonsils like oropharyngeal cancers in men and women so this is the hpv vaccine not the cervical cancer vaccine so we are using it synonymously that's a very important thing second is certain facts we should be knowing that hpv is most common sexually transmitted disease it's very common and it infects men and women both it's not only for female so it's a gender neutral uh, neutral thing so that's why we are always telling that we need a gentle neuter vaccine gender neutral vaccine more than 50 to 80 percent will have at least one type of hpv infection in their lifetime and the body's immune system will definitely try to fight it off but if this hpv infection if it is occurring in cervical cancer uh, cervix and if it doesn't go away by its own then it causes a change in cervical cells and most of the hpv infections in the types of hpv that can cause cancer they do not cause any symptoms until they have progressed to the pre cancer to cancer or enogenital war or they have been tested hpv positive so most of what happens the people they never know that they have got infected unless they reach to the stage of the cancer and that's the most important uh, point when you are discussing this vaccine now how does it get spread see it's an infection which is easily spread through the skin to skin and skin to mucosa contact with the infected area primarily during the sexually contact sexual contact so you do not require actual intercourse to be there because even a skin to skin contact can cause you that infection transmission the hpv has also been demonstrated by non sexual means including the self inoculation from one part to of the body to other from mother to child also the condoms we think that it that definitely is going to prevent no it doesn't totally prevent it because the skin to skin contact is one of the reason for hpv transmission hpv can spread even if the someone delays the sex until the marriage so has only one partner or it limits the number of sexual uh, partners so it's not that if you are married and you are only you are been loyal to your wife or your husband you don't get infection no it can and hpv cannot be transmitted by handshakes sharing clothes and using public toilet so this is also very important we should not be carried away where it spreads very uh, with various means now what are the classification now why we need to understand the classification of hpv because we know there are almost 150 200 types and out of that those are important for our this ca cancer uh, causing types to be that we are concentrating for making the vaccines so when we classify we classify according to potential to cause the cancer so at least 30 hpv types they target genital mucosa they are classified at a high risk and a low risk so high risk that means they are oncogenic and low risk they are less oncogenic now which are the high risk so 16 18 31 33 45 40, 52 and 58 these are high risk types so they can cause various cancers like cervix anal cancer vaginal vulvar penile and oropharyngeal so these are the oncogenic strains and there are non oncogenic or less uh, low risk type and these are the 6 and 11 there are also part of the vaccines we know that and that causes genital warts mind well friends genital warts are equally difficult to treat so we are getting frightened about the cancer no genital warts are also very important but yes they are low risk of the <coughs> oncogenicity so these low risk types they cause the benign lesion but ultimately they are genital warts which they are difficult to treat and high risk type 16 and 18 others they are causing a malignant lesion causing cancer now when we are talking about high risk 16 and 18 they are very important because 16 and 18 together you know 16 is around 70 percent and 18 is around say 12 to 13 percent so almost you know 83 percent particularly when you are talking about india 
So overall, globally, if you say this 16 and 18 together, they are accounting for 71 percent of cervical cancer cases. But in India, these two serotypes are almost making 83 percent chunks. So if you cover these two trains only, almost 83 percent success you know, for prevention of this particular cancer, cervical cancer. And there are other serotypes also, as I discussed. Low risk types, they are having 90 percent genetic words are due to type 6 and 11. So when we are talking about 6, 11, 16 and 18, these four strains, you almost cover 83 percent of cervical cancer, 90 percent of endogenous awards. So that is very important. Now, so the cancer causing types are 16 and 18, 83.2 percent of cervical cancer in India, 6 and 11, 90 percent of endogenous awards. And that is why we are targeting these four. Are you are changing one. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, now what is the exact disease burden? So, it is HPV and cervical because we know that there are six types of cancer can be caused by the HPV. But this two, the cervical cancers, the cervical cancer is very important out of these six. So, what are the data? See, data says that almost women at risk for cervical cancer more than 15 years, 51.15 crore. So, that is 17 percent of globe. So, one in six females they have been having this high risk for uh, cervical cancer. 1,23,000 new cases annually, that is 21 percent of globe. So, every fifth mother or fifth person who is having that cervical cancer cases are Indian. And 77 percent death occur annually, that is 23 percent, almost one in four death because of cervical cancer because of it is in India. So, that is why we can say one new case every five minutes. So, by the time I finish my talk, there will be four new cases and almost three deaths of the female with cervical cancer. Now, why it is important? We are trying to save the mothers when they are dying while in the process of birth of the baby. Here, this deaths are even more than that. So, the mothers we are saving, we are losing at other time. And this particular cancer occurs at a place, at a time when they are in 40s and 50s, which is very important for female of their life, the important years of their life. So, the question comes, can cervical cancer be prevented? Yes, it can be. And for that matter, we should have so many things. Three most important pillars, education and awareness, not only into laymen, to the pediatrician, the physicians also, screening, screening of the, uh, the patients or the mothers and vaccination. Now, before going to it, we should be knowing that how the HPV infection progresses to cervical cancer. This oncogenic types, it infects and ultimately it makes abnormal cell and then there is a growth of that. And then second thing is, there has to be persistent of infection because I said the infection can get clear by its own. If it remains persistent, it will cause the cancer in the long run. And lastly, the precancerous condition should get converted to cancer. So we have a window of opportunity because precancerous condition is not cancer. We can definitely manage at that level. And after it becomes cancer, it's like the disease, like rabies. Once it is happening, we don't have a cure. Similarly, malignancy of cancer once occurs, cancer we don't have a cure. We just have to manage patient. So, survey cancer awareness. So, what is awareness? People are not aware that there is tremendous disease burden. People may lack accurate information about natural history detection and infection. Then women and parents, they may, may not have heard about cervical cancer. They do not recognize the early signs and symptoms because we are, they are not talking about it. And women at risk may, be, may not be aware of the need for to be tested even when they do not have symptoms. The people think that when the, 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 they have symptoms, they will try to go for an investigation. But before that, they do not check. That is the problem. Now, the screening, why cervical uh, cancer? The most often it is found in a woman who have not been screened with the pap test since last 10, 5 years or never been tested. So that is why it is very important two screening tests. One is the pap smear which is just a screening and high risk HPV test that will give you confirmation. So these two things are important and how frequently you need to get uh, checked. See cervical cancer screening recommendation woman average is we should start screening at 21 years of age. That is pap test 3 years between 21 to 29 years and pap test and HPV test every 5 years between 30 to 65 years or pap test every 3 years. Now, I wonder how many of females in the audience have tested for this pap test if you are falling in this age. Yes, you need to be aware and we need to make our parents aware, the children as well as the parents aware. So, then lastly comes the last and very useful weapon that is the vaccination. HPV vaccination is highly effective in preventing the vaccine susceptible uh, women with HPV serotypes covered by the vaccines. And we know that two vac even the two serotypes that will give you almost 83 percent coverage. And HPV vaccine should be given to females before they reach to the age when the risk 
of HPV increases and they are at a subsequent risk of cervical cancer. So, that is why it is very important to vaccinate. Now, WHO has understood that, that this is a disease which is a vaccine preventable or it can be definitely we can bring it down because WHO is targeted that we have to you know eradicate or control this cervical cancer and decrease the number of deaths because if we do not act at that this particular time next 20 years there will be 54 percent increase in cervical cancer deaths. So, as the mention threshold WHO said we will bring it down to less than 4 cases of cervical cancer per 1000 uh, 100,000 women per year. So, for that they decided 3 things. We need to do the vaccination or with the HPV vaccine by age of 15 years, 19 per 90 percent of the females by 15 years we should be vaccinating. 70 percent of women, women are screened to be screened with the high performance test by 35 years of age and again at 45 years. So, screening is important. 90 percent of the women identified with cervical cancer should receive treatment. So, if it is in pre-cancer should be received the treatment and if it is a cancer then it should be a management of that. Now, there is an inequality in access to HPV vaccine that if you see this put to, to graph, then you see on the left side there is the HPV incidence and on the right side the coverage of vaccine. Now, when you see Asia, Africa, there are more number of cases, but the vaccination is less. So, if you talk about India, India is again falling in the same. Why it is happening? Because there is a high burden of the cervical cancer because there is a low awareness, the screening and vaccine reluctance is there and there is insufficient availability and access to the vaccine. So, approximately 90 percent of the estimated new cases and the deaths due to cervical cancer in 2020 occurred in low and middle income countries. Now, this is huge. Now, the, those countries who have been developed countries, they are having awareness. They get the PEP test done. They get the testing done and they have the access to vaccine. But unfortunately, developing countries, awareness is low and vaccine availability is also low. So, that and particularly when you are having a low, uh, you know, screening rate, your vaccine will work better. So, you need to improve upon the vaccination. For that matter, we should be having a affordable HPV vaccine because that is the need of now. Because we know that the vaccine is available by MSD, it is very costly. So, the driving force behind this development of quadrivalent HPV vaccine was to produce effective, safe and affordable vaccine for reach out of the immunization program, thereby reducing the local and global burden of the cervical cancer. And we know that we have one company that called Serum Institute of India that has been come forward for supplying, they have been known for supplying life saving vaccines cost effectively. We have seen during the COVID, our two companies like both Indian company, they have done a wonderful work all throughout the world. So, we are proud of here. We, we are Indian, we are really proud of our country. So, Sarvavax that was you know in it started developing since 2010 and by 2022 July we had a grant of marketing authorized in India. So, within 10 years we got this cost effective and very effective vaccine in our country and now this vaccine will be supplied to many countries developing countries not only for India what we did for the corona same thing. So, it is a HPV vaccine which is viral, uh, virus like partic particle vaccine and here the, it is made from the virus like particles that cannot cause infection with HPV or cause cancer. So, that vaccine does not cause any infection that is important. Now, there is a because we have to go undergo one study and that is phase 2 by 3 uh, study which is very important for us to understand. It is a partially double brand multi center randomized active controlled study and here you know whenever new vaccine comes they have to be they have to be compared with existing brand for the immunogenicity non inferiority trials to be done and the safety trial. So, usually the phase 2 trial is safety and you start establishing the immunogenicity and phase 3 you establish non inferiority. So, here the two age cohorts 1 to 9, 9 to 14 years and 15 to 20 to 26 years these two cohorts were selected. Now, Sarvavec was given to uh, three arms like male, female and the female Gaddafi because this Sarvavec was tried for male and female uh, both the comparator was only Gardasil and Gardasil is approved only for females. So, you have a comparison with only Gardasil given to females. So, these were the uh, trial sites and what was the objective? Objective was to assess the safety and then immunogenicity. So, phase 2 summary of safety is the adverse effect re reported by phase 3 trial was predominantly mild to moderate and non-serious serious as well as it the patient recovered completely. There was no solicited reactogenicity with severity of grade 3 or more which was reported during the study, study and none of the serious adverse effect was causally related to this study of the vaccine. So, this vaccine was proved to be safe.
now as we compared to phase 2 slash 3 study cohort 1 9 to 14 years we gave 2 dose and cohort 2 15 to 26 years that 3 dose schedule was given they were uh, almost equal part 366 66, the uh, number members or subjects and they were compared so here again you look at it the girls 9 to 14 years this serum vaccine was given 2 dose boys 2 dose and women 15 to 26 and males 15 to 26 years 3 doses were given as compared to 3 doses of Gardasil in all this age group. Now what they found? We need to prove the non-inferiority and for that matter you should have the lower confidence interval of 95% in more than 0.5. So that was compared with Gardasil with a non-inferiority margin of 0.5 and what they found that immunology the zero conversion was tested at 7 months. So, we have given the 3 doses or 2 doses at 0, 2 and 6 or 0 and 6 and after 1 month they checked for the immunogenicity what was the zero conversion and they were particular cut off values above which we considered zero converted and what we found almost 100 percent zero conversion against 4 types of vaccine which have been uh, like the virus which have been covered in that vaccine. So, again cohort 1 at 7 months same figures cohort 2 that is 15 to 26 years same. So, 100 percent zero conversion. Now, what about the immune response? Now, immune response, if you consider, the internationally it has been said that if you have the, the zero conversion two to four times fold higher titer, then your vaccine is zero converted and it is working. Okay. But what happened is this particular brand, when it was studied, there was 1,000 fold rise above survival, above with the survival. So, it definitely reassures the higher antibody titer. Yes, it does not definitely directly convert into the, your efficacy, but higher antibody titer is important. Because there was a Gardasil study which showed that 4 to 5 years there was dip in the, uh, the, the titer. Even the zero conversion rates were going down, but still at 12 years data we they found there was not a single case of the uh, thoracic cancer in those groups. So, there may be other reasons for the vaccine to work. But yes, antibody titer with high definitely gives us the confidence that is going to because this cancer is you are giving it at age of 9 to 14, 15 years and we are just trying to protect for the whole life. So, that is why it is very important to see this uh, uh, antibody. So, what is the summary of this particular paper? Sarvavik has a robust uh, antibody response. 100 percent zero conversion was reported in all four field types. GMT titer was almost more than 1000 fold. Adverse effect reported was only mild to moderately intensive intensity and it recovered completely. No vaccine related uh, serious adverse effect and overall incidence of adverse effect within the acceptable limit. And this was studied in Lancet and then the question came at what age to vaccine this our cup of tea. Now because we could be in a pediatrician we have been advising a vaccine which has been uh, used for the disease which is occurring in the adulthood. So why what age and for that matter there were few papers which showed that younger the better. Why? So, this is a Spain study. There they had a two cohort, one cohort like 10 to 30 years the, the subjects were selected and then they were assessed till 31st birthday and then they tried to see if they have given a vaccine below 17 years that is close to 12 years and above 17 years that is close to 17 years and these two they were compared and then they, they assessed what is happening to that 12 years data. What they found 88 percent lower uh, risk of cervical cancer if they have been vaccinated before 17 years. So, that is reassuring. There is one more study in the UK that was an observational study. They found that younger the age of uh, vaccination, you get higher reduction of cervical cancer. So, it is 87 percent reduction if you have given vaccine at 12 to 13 years. So, benefits of vaccinating 9 years is one more time for completion because we need to complete without before 15. Results is stronger immune response. Increased likelihood of vaccinating prior to first HPV exposure and decreased questions about the sexual activity whether because parents in India we know that my child is going to get married later is the sexual activity. So, we do not have to talk about it. We just give the vaccine at 9 to 15 years and increase vaccination and therefore cancer can be prevented. And US they found the, this particular strategy working when we are offering it at younger age. So, the product information this is what it has been showed that the mode of administration is intramuscular, presentation 1 and 2 dose while it is there, but now the single dose is available. Vaccination schedule 9 to 14 years, 2 dose for male and female both 0 to 6, 0 and 6 months, 15 to 26 years, 3 doses, 0, 2 and 6. And it is a very normal uh, the respiratory requirement. So, if you see whatever available HPV vaccine, so if you take 6 and 11, 
90% of the generator was covered. 16 and 18, 84% of cervical cancer. So we use, even if you bivalent vaccine, we are going to get almost 83% coverage against the cervical cancer. And if you have the luxury to go for nine-valent vaccine, it is absolutely good to have that because that will cover another 15%. So that will reach almost 99%. But affordability is very important in our country, we know. So this is that in general comparison, Cervarix is now, I think, gradually been phased out from the market. So we have MSD, four-valent and nine-valent and Cervavax, which is the, again, four-valent vaccine. Recommendation is important, nine to 14 years, for girls, two doses, Gardasil, okay. Gardasil 4, not licensed for males, okay. So, for less than 14 years, 15 years, two doses. Above 15 years, three doses for women. Gardasil 9, yes, it has been licensed for male and female both, but that is only for 9 to 26 years, but it is a three-dose schedule, okay. And boys, 9 to 14 years also, it is a three-dose. While this Sarvavax serum brand is only having that, uh, the two dose for boys and girls, 9 to 14 years and 15 to 26 years, it is three dose, 0, 2 and 6. So, my mic is not working or they have muted it. Hello? So, so it has been considered as silver bullet for cervical cancer. It has been very well appreciated because, why silver bullet? Because this vaccine can be utilized for the use of all the developing countries. And it has been having a partnership with many, many brand, uh, the companies. So, in nutshell, I can say that Cervavax, which is a serum brand, it is quadrivalent HPV vaccine having a 6, 11, 16, 18. It is the first indigenously developed and manufactured vaccine in India. It is a sterile suspension of intramuscular administration. It is prepared from highly purified virus-like particles of a recombinant major capsid L1 structural protein. HPV vaccination, it elicits the neutralizing antibody in the sera and cervical vaginal secretions. And it protects uninfected individuals from persistence of endogenital infection and associated disease caused by vaccine-targeted HPV type. And after all the efforts, more than 10 years of R&D, this particular brand has been available at a cost-effective rate. So, cervical, uh, so Cervavax, this is sustainable, high-volume, high-quality, cost-effective vaccine. It is first indigenous and it is for boys and uh, girls both. It is most affordable and it is having a tremendous track record. We saw that during the COVID time, the company we trust and the brand we trust and it is having a, you know, huge capacity to generate the, or uh, prepare this vaccination. Thank you so much. That was an update about HPV.